Hello and welcome to the Life and Fight of a Podcast. 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 This is a UFC review. Uh, <laughs> I'm joined by Sorry. in Simon Price from High BJ, who's now <laughs> laughing because of probably Tim. <laughs> I'm old, I'm full of wind. This is what happens when you get to 40. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> as you as you were, Jake, as you were. <laughs> as I said, I'm joined by my co-host, Aaron Price, and we're also again joined by, well, the first ever guest we've had to return, really, yeah. in uh, Tim McKnight. So Tim was with us last week. We did the review of UFC 249. So we want to get sort of the uh, off the heels of that midweek UFC. And now we're going straight back into another UFC. So that's three in seven days, which... We're spoiled rotten, really, after nothing for eight weeks, aren't we, guys? Mm-hmm. Definitely. And then we've got yeah. another another card next weekend, and then weekend after we've got Sug. So it's... I don't think there's one ne- May 30th after this. No, we've got... I thought it was the um, Woodley and Thingy card next weekend. Yeah, it's May 30th. I'll have a look in a minute. I thought there's a break next week. Um, not like I'm going to From famine to feast, eh? Uh, definitely. Um, so... We'll, we'll, we'll hit straight off. UFC 249 was the first uh, event for uh, the world, really, give or take, um, for around eight, nine weeks. Um, let's start off right at the beginning. Uh, the opening bout was Ryan Spann and Sam Alva. Wasn't a bad fight, to be honest with you. I ended up in a split decision win to Ryan Spann. I agreed with that. Um, but to kick off um, what we hadn't had in a while, what were your boys' thoughts? Yeah, it was all right. I mean, um, I was kind of... Sam was doing all right. He was coming back in some nice little kind of like, you know what I mean? It, it was nice. Uh, I was really thinking he's going to take it at some point, but yeah, just wasn't really happening for the geezer. But you know, he did a good, um, good show of himself. Simon? Yeah, there's nothing much I can really add to that one. It was, it was enjoyable to watch, but didn't really rip the doors down with it. Yeah. I think what... Um, and I touched on this last week, uh, last Tuesday, that I thought this could have been a sleeper fight for, for maybe fight the night or performance of the night. And it definitely delivered in my eyes. I was shocked that he didn't get performance of the night. Uh, it was in Bryce Mitchell against Charles Rosa. Um, yeah. It was, to me, it was probably the best grappling I've seen in MMA. And that mm-hmm. that's quite a broad statement because you've got the likes like Damian Meyer, John Fitch, all them great grapplers that have been in, in there. Um, but, the, this guy was going through Rose's guard like a hot knife through butter, making things and transitions look easy. It, it, it was it was like black belt versus white belt. It was so fucked up. And the yeah. geezer's like legit as well. Rose is a black belt. Uh, Ricardo Laborio black belt yes. as well, I think. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but like, yeah, look at the uh, scorecard. It's like 30-25, 30-25, 30-24. I Dude, scored it 30-24. I mean, <laughs> when, does, when do you ever see that? You know what I mean? Like when I heard them say 24, I was just like, did, wait, I was, <laughs> it was so weird, you know? How do you figure that one out? <laughs> the, the, the thing that I took from it is, you think about it, if Charles Rosa could have then again fought on a Wednesday, on the Wednesday card, if, if I think he would have been medical clear because he didn't take damage. But to, if you would have said 30, 24, you went, oh, let's see the other guy, was he fucked up? So, no. <laughs> Uh, he come out, out of the match looking like a pretzel, though. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. He got tired in so many knots. I'm surprised he's still not undoing them now. I like, think there's like four twister attempts. He was just one like, round. Was, yeah, I mean, like, at some point, one of the guys was saying, like, he's done more twister attempts than, like, I think he's doubled the amount that have been in the UFC, you know? <laughs> it was ridiculous. He was just, yeah, he was so, so good. Um, I didn't realise up until this moment that he's a 145er. Isn't Brian Ortega a 145er? Yes. Oh, that's yeah, a great that. shout. Look, my mind just went... <laughs> <laughs> mate, mate, they got to set that up. they got to set that up. Come I on. 100%. To me, obviously, you've got, like, Volkanov at the minute, uh, Volkanovski as, as, as the champion, but for me, he's definitely a, he's definitely a top 10 guy who's out at this uh, Bryce Mitchell right now. Um, mm. And I think he's still learning... Uh, he can speak on the mic. He's got. He's got. Um, what like he's got the attitude where you can. He's likable. Um, he's willing to fight. Obviously, we talked on the last one where he fucking drilled his nuts. So it makes you feel like you've got. You've got to support him a little bit. Uh, but what's his stand up like? Pardon? What's his stand up like? Do we know? Pretty decent from from what I remember. He was in the the, the tough house that, that I remember him most. So um, he's not finished anyone by stand up, but he's. 
the majority on the ground, he's a great ground guy, but his face Tyler Diamond, he's beat Bobby Moffitt, both by decision, which are tough, durable guys, and he's had to obviously strike with them. He's not been able to um, have all his way all the time. But yeah, it'd be, it'd be pretty cool to see when he does get his first knockout because I feel like you'll we'll see a dominating, a bit like Damian Meyer, dominate the ground so, so well. So he's so good at that. So he probably mm. can maybe give up on that a little bit and go towards a striking because he knows he's so good at the grappling. Um, yeah, I mean, he's striking better be sweet because he's, if he gets someone with like hardcore takedown defence and he's, he's striking and up to his par, he's going to get seriously fucked up. Well, that's it. Like looking at the rest of the division, like top five, you've got Zabit in there. Oh, dude. You've got Holloway. You've got Edgar. Mate. Like, yes. Um, this for me is potentially the middleweight division like 10 years ago. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Good. Yeah, that's a very good way of putting it. Like, there's so many names in there. Like, I'd love to see maybe one or two fights more for him and then put him up against Zabit to really test him so if you look at the like is for me Zabit's top of the division if we look at the featherweight division here just the top 15 rankings the number 15 is uh, Dan Eig then Sodic Yusuf who's his striking is unreal uh, Ryan Hall imagine him versus Ryan Hall <laughs> Nah. Is Ryan Hall one of 45? Yeah, number 13 in the world. Imagine him trying and to... And he can't get a fight at the minute because he's just fucking... Yeah, apparently he's like really struggling uh, to kind of get a fight. Thing is, I don't see that fight doing much for um, Ryan Hall. To be honest, like he's... He, oh, don't get me wrong, he's great. But I don't know. Like he's look, coming to me a bit more of a gatekeeper now. Like... I think with Ryan Hall, I think he's, like you say, he's struggling to get fights. Will they just accept this fight just for the reason, just to make sure he can get out there? Maybe. Um, but obviously, yeah, it'll be a lose-lose situation for him in a way because he can't climb the rankings because of that. Um, but maybe that's a future one. He's got to fight someone to break into the top 15. Dan Ig is there, Ryan Hall. Um, I mean, the geezer's 8-1 at the minute. The only loss he's had is his very first fight. And beyond that, he's fucked everybody else up. Um, yeah. Okay, his last one was a decision, decision, decision. Uh, heel hook, heel hook, rear naked. Yeah, yeah. I mean, at the moment, though, his jits just seem deadly. I mean, like, you know, he was super slick against BJ Penn. Uh, and I'm pretty sure he had Darren Elkin in a bunch of fits as well, didn't he? Yeah, but like, I'm not really looking at that BJ Penn fight as one as a sort of measuring stick. Like, good point. Don't get Very wrong, good BJ point. Penn in his heyday was an absolute monster and great to watch mm. but that wasn't the bj pen that we grew up like i came into the sport watching it yeah was, he's nowhere near that, that anymore mental air physical air, everything uh, can i just say obviously people that maybe only listening and not seeing this it looks like tim will you agree simon's gonna have a guest join him on that other couch <laughs> <laughs> it's like his camera angled it for, for a special Come guest on in. <laughs> You know what it is? I've angled it so you can't see the bin. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Oh, um, you do right. That's the only reason it's angled that way, just so you can't see the bin. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, blah, 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 come on down. <laughs> and tonight, Matthew, I'm going to be... <laughs> Simon's going to walk towards the bin and come round as a different person. <laughs> So, obviously, great performance by Bryce. He's got a lot a lot of potential and it's really enjoying to watch him. Obviously, like I say, he's now going to get his camo shorts as per an agreement with uh, Dana if he won this fight. So that'd be cool. Uh, I think he'll get a quick turnaround. Uh, but next night, next fight, potential fight of the night, uh, Vincent Luque versus Nico Price. Um, yes. Wow. This was a war. This is a big... Because we talked about this, this is a rematch. So... Nico was beat last time by Luke by sub submission. And we thought maybe it might go the same way or might go, uh, I put it to the Luke second round TKO. Went in the third round. Um, but wow, what a fight. These two dogs just didn't want to give up. You know, that was no. a very good fight. Very entertaining. Lots of back and forth. These guys were swinging from the hip, man. It was, it was, it was just cool to see. Not great for longevity, but still, it was a great <laughs> excellent fight. <laughs> the, um, the eye... Just let's talk about the eye, the damage that he took. What do you think? Hmm. Not good. Not a good look at all. 
trying to get it up now on uh, the images. It was so it was um, closed up more as immediately in the third round when he got shot, but it was just a build up of the damage that he took in that whole fight. And I love the uh, end of sequence uh, when they were, thinking, were they announcing the winner. Was that right? Um, and he was like just looking at the camera, like just trying to stare <laughs> at his eye. I thought that was quite cool. Yeah, I'll see if we can get it up here, boys. One sec. Yeah, this image I've found here is <laughs> it's like uh, sloth from the Goonies. <laughs> so can you see that there? No, I can see no. your uh, Facebook, son. Oh, apologies. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get my see. Up. Hope I wasn't slugging anyone off, which I never do. <laughs> uh, let me get it back up. Mm. All right, that's because I clicked the wrong thing. Is it on now? Yeah. So yeah, look, fucking that, mate. It's crazy. I would not want to be anything like that. Um, wow. That's your job. That's your job. Like, you can't get a hate on complain. That's, that's what happens, <laughs> mate. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell. Ugh. What's the thing? What do you think is the next thing then with... Um, with Vincent Luque, because he seems to be obviously coming off a couple of losses, then he's on a bit of a run. Do you think? What do you think is next for him? Like we said about Bryce, I think he just needs a, another match or two just to solidify his position. Um, like what, what, I think it may be a while. Actually, his last fight before this one was against um, Stephen Thompson, and he yeah. lost that one. That's them kind of pushing him up a little bit, saying, all right, are you ready for these sort of... I mean, fuck's sake, it's Stephen Thompson, though, man, you know what I mean? It's not yeah. that it shouldn't be the gatekeeper, for fuck's sake. So it may be a bit of time before they kind of pop him, pop, pop him back up again. Yeah, he's number 13 sense. in the world, so he's above Anthony Pettis and he's above McGregor on the rankings, from what I can see here. Uh, just above him is Robbie Lawler, Jeff Neal, Nate Diaz, Dos Anjos, Chiesa. I would maybe him versus Chiesa would be quite fun. Him versus Lawler, they, obviously look what he did to Nico. That might be a good stand up because obviously Lawler's got great stand up and good wrestling. So I think mm. Luke will struggle to get him down and maybe we'll have another war in front of us. Um but yeah, that that was that probably I enjoyed that. That was probably a fight of the night bar, maybe the main event. Um it yeah. was a great, great back and forth fight. Um the next two I'll, I'll read them off because I was quite disappointed in in, in in the amount of work from these four <coughs> fighters, really. Carla Esparza and Michelle Waterson and then L -L 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 um, Alexei Lelnyk, if I pronounce that, against Fabricio Verdum. Um I thought the, this level of the ladies would have given more to it, but it became more down to a technical battle, um, just trying to outscore each other, and no one really went for the killer killer instinct, and they both finished by a split decision. How did you guys score the uh, the women's throwaway fight? I oh, yeah. fell asleep. <laughs> yeah, the next two fights I fast forwarded. Like I watched. It, like, <laughs> yeah, I mean I watched it, but it was still boring times. as shit. Mm. Yeah, like, I thought I thought Watson and, and uh, Asparza would have been pretty pretty decent fight compared to where they are but i, I thought so too can, they cancel each other out and maybe that's what it was one of them i wouldn't hold it against them but um split decision there um i agree with the decision even though what it was yeah. to win uh the next one threw me a little bit because i scored it for for doom uh 29 28 but it went to ll nick by split decision so obviously one judge agreed with me um, wasn't that entertaining, uh, quite slow pace. For Doom, definitely didn't look like he was on the gas because of um, obviously that his time off. He looked like he was quite sloppy in the positions. Um, Sam, what did you think? Uh, for this one, like, yeah, they agree. Like, it just didn't look like they were there, like, fully on par with it. Like, I think possibly the camp might have affected it, like, gas tank wise, strategy wise, timing wise. Maybe they're like a crowd. But it, for me, this, like I said, fast forwarding over the fights, it just didn't really, it didn't really do nothing for me, these two. Tim? I mean, the geezer's had a bunch of time off um, and whatever he was taking, he's probably not taking it anymore. So you got to kind of, get, you know, take that into account as well. Um, so like, yeah, that most of the amount of time off, he's only ever going to get so, going to come back. So, you know, I mean, it's such, such a level. Um, but yeah, I was bored fucking shitless. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
The next fight picked up a little bit. It wasn't as good as I thought it would be in, in Pettis and Cerrone. Pettis got the nod by unanimous decision. I agree. That's exactly how I thought that fight was going to go. Not in terms of the overall result, but just in terms of, like, you know, how the fight played out in and of itself. It was basically what I expected. Like, Pettis is a very good points fighter, isn't he? Yeah. Mm. By his background with uh, like his martial arts like base, it's very points-based martial art. And he kind of plays for the sport as opposed to plays for like a Cerrone or he goes for the kill. Pettis will sort of play for getting the points and sort of winning the rounds. Mm. Who was it that Donald Cerrone beat when they did that meme with the Dragon Ball when he was sort of coming in and out like Super Saiyan he was beating the guy Rick up? Story. Rick Story. Did you see how many times he went for that combination like turning the angles with the kicks towards the end? He went for mm. like about 10, 20 times around and I just thought... If you can catch Pettis here with his first shot, because he was hitting one, two, moving the angle, and then Pettis was already outside of, yeah. of the firing line. Um, so I was just, I was, the amount of time I was shouting to him, throw the head kick because Pettis' hands were down, and I've seen it and he's hit it before. He didn't really shoot, throw that many head kicks. He was throwing, uh, like. He did end up, I think he did clock him in the chin now at one point, and Pettis just fucking ate it. I think that's the only one that he, or maybe the only one or two that he threw. I think he could have hit him a lot more, especially with that combination when he gets sort of one, two, and he sort of turns a corner, hook, and then hits the mm. kick. I think if he would have got rid of the hook, which <clears throat> Pettis was avoiding, and hit the kick, I think he would have maybe rocked him or, or got something. But I guess it, maybe both in, in both their eyes, it, it was like they were playing safe in a way because they knew how each one was dangerous and they've both been on, on a few losses. Um but what's that four in a row for Serona? But obviously that's his least worst win, if that makes sense, compared to the other three. Yeah, yeah I, think... I mean, with that one, it looked like he could have gone his way. Even Anthony Pettis himself was like surprised that he went like, you know, Anthony's way. So, yeah, I think uh, Serona, though, he's pretty much like, do you know, you get like a, a teacher in like a school, he gets is it tenure? Pretty mm. sure serrone has got like tenure out of the UFC where he's like, you just yeah. can't get fired. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. the furniture and all that, yeah. Yeah, like, I th I, I'm hoping for Cerrone's health wise, he does similar to what he did for Chuck Liddell. Do you know where he sort of keeps him in contracts so he can't fight for his own safety? Yeah. That's I, I don't I don't think Sean is at, at that position yet. I think he's a couple of years off, but yeah, I agree with that. I think he's not gonna even if he got beaten in his next ten fights, I don't think he would get released because uh, I don't see Cerrone really putting in a bad performance, really. Um, no. And he's entertaining it, and he sells pay per views. And he's just he's just one of them where you, you cannot not like him. No. Um, he's a literally is is a cowboy and he does cowboy shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm um, still shuddering from his um, cave diving story. <clears throat> Dude, that proper had me like I was on the edge of my seat. What's oh, this one? Uh, so um, he goes on a cave diving kind of well, sort of expedition with one of his mates, uh, and the whole thing kind of goes wrong, and it's almost his mate's fault, uh, yeah. and he almost dies essentially. He told it on uh, Joe Rogan's podcast. It was Let really miss. good. Uh, if you put into YouTube, um, Donald Cerrone cave diving, yeah, it's like a 10, 15 minute story. Put it on headphones in and zone out. Mate, my, I, had, I had that much anxiety after listening to the story that I had to go for a walk. <laughs> yeah, I was there, dude. I was there. It really kind of like, you know, just the description, the way he's describing it, his feelings as well. Oof. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the definitely. dude knows how to relay information, man. Yeah, I'll definitely check that out after this. Yeah. Um, so that brings us to the end of the prelim. So we're talking, what, about two, three in the morning for the UK. And I was pretty awake by this point. I was like, this is not a bad card. Uh, I was on a Zoom call with a couple of your guys from Hive, um, mm. just sort of chatting shit and about the fights. So that kept me awake. That was cool. <laughs> so we move on to the main card, and we've got uh, Greg Hardy against Jorgen De Castro. This was a better fight than I thought it was going to be. Um, yeah, well, the first round, yeah, but after that, he was like boring as shit because he wouldn't fucking throw a punch, would he? Because he broke his foot. Yes. So with this one, we all. We all counted that Greg was going to win, but Jorgen did a better account for himself than, than I even realised. Um, but yeah, every time Greg fights, I always count him out, even though I predict him in this one. I mean, like, not expecting much. But I feel like he is improving slowly. Yeah. yeah. Well, the thing is, they're, they're being very nice about bringing him up as opposed to just throwing him to the wall straight away. Yeah. I can see after um, Wednesday's card and how OSP performed, I can see him and Hardy meeting pretty soon. 
Um, but yeah, I think because he is an athlete and he is going to pick up the skill set quickly, uh, probably quicker than most. He's being he's being nurtured in the right way. Um, I'd just probably like to see him push the pace, like you said, like push it a bit more. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, it wasn't the most exciting fight. I mean, you know, it was entertaining enough, but it was yeah, it was <laughs> nothing, nothing that kind of stuck in the memory, you know. Mm. <laughs> The next fight was a great fight, especially for the two rounds that we had it all around and a half. Jeremy Stevens at Wayne's missed weight again by five and a half pounds or four and a half pounds of the weight limit. So there's a lot of pissed off people on social media that he's missed weight quite a few times recently. But mm. um, great back and forth first round. Um, Stevens didn't like he's missed the beat. Obviously, he's aging now. Obviously, he's, he's been in this in the UFC for a very, very long time. He's nicknamed sort of like the son of UFC because of how long he's been there. Um, Kel Calvin Catardo is definitely a prospect. Great finish, busting him open with that standing and elbow. Um, what what did you take from this fight, Tim? Ah, uh, kid's got skills, but I mean Jeremy Stevens <clears throat> is a decent yardstick, but he's not kind of like I wouldn't refer to him as like top ten yardstick. I'd mm. say he's maybe a couple of steps behind gatekeeper. You know, I mean, no disrespect, but just, you know, from, from you know, because, I mean, look, he wins a couple, loses a couple, wins a couple, loses a couple, you know what I mean? It's just, yeah. I think he's got, like, the most losses in the UFC. Is that correct? 18. Um, the loss in the, in the UFC, though? I think, he's UFC. Been, I think he holds the record for the most losses in the UFC. Hold on a second. So he's got 18 losses and only one's been outside. So 17. Wow. I, I, I never really thought about that as a record. Thing is, like putting that out there, though it's one of them ones where he he's one of them where he's been a regular one that takes the the dangerous fights. Yeah, his last so, four fights are prospects. Obviously, not prospects in Aldo, but Aldo was pound for pound at some point. Then he got yeah. beat by Sabit. Then he got beat by Rodriguez. Then he got beat by Qatar. So he, he gets beat by legit guys or, or yeah, he's not getting beat by nobody's is he? he's no he's there he's like, he's he is like, number one by the way in losses <clears throat> he is number one wow mm -hmm. i guess you've got it's one of them where someone says like you, you're a four-time world champion well you've got to be beat four times to win the belt four times but we, we've got to be in there to, to put it on the line um i guess one thing that obviously i know he's been the losses but for someone that's been in that sort of tenure sometimes you just get given a title shot because of that tenure a bit like I'm not saying Bisping did because he was on a bit of a run, but um, maybe, maybe for Stevens to get that, he'd have to be on a probably a two or a three fight tear and like yeah. quite decisive wins. Maybe mm. he was close to after the Aldo fight because he beat Melendez, Choi, and Emmett. And then he fought Aldo. If he would have beat Aldo, maybe that was a title fight. That maybe that was yeah. sort of his last last hurrah. Um, four losses, uh, well, losses, no win in five because of the no contest. Where yeah, yeah, before they did the rematch and the loss. Um, I don't really know what's next for Jeremy in the featherweight division. I don't know really who you would put in there with him because do you still put him in there to lose against a prospect or do you lower him down the rankings a little bit? Prospect. Um, put him in there to lose. Um, <laughs> yeah. Tim does not hold back with this shit. <laughs> you know what? It'd be a good fight. Him and Cub. Have they fought before? I think they might have. I feel like they have. I feel like they have. I don't know. I, mm. But on like a sort of purely a... Do you know what? Let's just get an entertaining fan go with entertaining yeah. fight going. Mm. Yeah, they fought. Uh, Cub won by decision June 2014. Um, See, that's, that's a rematch, actually. A rematch. Yeah. I'd happily watch. Yeah, that's, that's yeah, that's possible. Really that um, put him in there with Ryan Hall. Not See if he'd take the fight, though. I can't see why. He's, he's not one of them people that's going to duck and dive, though, is he? Like, good point. Very good point. He doesn't, he doesn't, he's never come across as somebody who, like, you know, would uh, try and be cautious about anything. He's, um, yeah, he's always trying to take your fucking head off, I think. Yeah, like, he has beat some good guys, but I think, he, I think he's probably, hopefully he's got someone in his corner that's having that honest conversation with him, like, look, mate, I think you've probably missed your last title shot let's just go out there and have fun mm. and put him in there with guys that are going to be game like like you say your, your Cub Swansons maybe throw him in there with Ryan Hall um, that might be a little bit too risky though for him like what do you reckon to an Edgar fight 
Mm, yeah, I mean, Edgar's on his way down. He, he so... beat Edgar about eight fights ago. He did beat oh, sorry, Edgar. Sorry, Edgar beat him eight fights ago. Uh, Pretty much. Edgar at the same as he used to be. Yeah, UFC 205. Same Sad. night as um, Alvarez and McGregor. Mm. Yeah, that was a while back, that. In the back, I wouldn't mind seeing Frankie Edgar retire, to be fair. Um, <laughs> I, I'm a big fan of that geezer. Uh, he's getting he's getting sparked out a little bit too much for my liking. Um, I'm well, he's moving that. down to bantamweight next. Maybe that's his resurgence. See what happens there. Um, obviously, isn't that what happened when he left the 155? <clears throat> Pardon? Isn't that isn't that the same reason why he left 155? To yeah, I think 145 and then... I think long long. If you would if you would have gone back 10, 15 years ago and the UFC had a 135 division. And it was prominent. I think he would have always been a 135 or but I think in, in his mindset, because he was 155 champion, he tried to stay there because he won it even though he's small. Then he's like, fuck it, I go down to featherweight, maybe that's more natural. But he can make 135, he could probably make 125, he said in the past. But because he was winning, you why would you move? Why would you put your body through it? But I think he's at the point now where he knows in his last sort of run, 135. Um imagine Edgar versus Dominic Cruz. Still, though, off it, I think Dominic That's would spark him. His beat is, yeah, I mean, look, think about it, right? From my perspective, um, yeah, he's been sparked out a little bit too much lately. Uh, in contrast to when he used to fight, what's that? Uh, what's Gray Maynard? He was getting he was getting blitzed everywhere, and you couldn't get rid of that little geezer. You know what I mean? Now it's like you know, unfortunately, like a bit of a gust of wind, and the geezer's gone. Um, no disrespect, but yeah, it's just. <laughs> yeah, um, no, we'll I, move on from that then. <laughs> I just say in there though, like it's yeah, like his his last fights, like his losses, he's lost to quite a few to punches, doctor stoppages. Mm -hmm. I think yeah, I'm in agreement there. He's, I would like to see him retire. Um, maybe do like a. Do you like a, the old heritage fight where it's sort of like, all right, then let's get you a good entertaining fight for the fans and get you get you to retire on that one? No, I don't kind of like they did with like Code Shaw and Coleman. Yeah. Mm. Nice way to kind of like, you know, adios. Yeah, I don't think Edgar's at that point yet. Um, maybe in a couple of years, but just not yet. Um, I just think not, so we're on heavyweights now, um, yeah. which this ended as fast as you could probably take a swig of water. Um, Francis Ngannou against uh, Rosenstruck. Um, Fucking marked him, marked him. I was <laughs> watching it. I was watching it right, and I was saying this to Simon uh, the other day. The uh, I was on Zoom with two of Simon's mates from Hive, and we we're talking about the fight. And one was watching it on BT Sport app. I was watching it on the TV. He was about ten seconds behind me, and we're trying not to spoil it. And then his other mate was dodgy streaming it <laughs> and he was like a 40 seconds behind us and I was watching it on my lap I was watching the screen I have a laptop in front of me and I just went he just murdered him <laughs> he just fucking murdered him and they just went wait what and I was like Rosenstruck's dead <laughs> he's on the cage like that <laughs> fuck me like he just he, he like like someone said in Garnu swing like your life depended on it <laughs> fuck technique yeah. fuck like you know what I mean trying to get out of the way Put your chin right up in the air, start <laughs> swinging, and hope for the best, and it fucking worked, mate. What made me laugh though was he come out like covering up, protecting, <laughs> and then he was like, "Do you know what? Stuff it." Did Dropped it down and just like, went with a leg kick, one leg kick, and it looked like quite technical. And then he was like, mm, "Fuck it." <laughs> yeah, he was like, "Yeah, yeah, I've got your leg kick, bitch." <laughs> <laughs> Literally, like he was. Rosen Street was against the cage like that for longer than the entrances. Mate, fucking haymakers, mate, you know what I mean? He, uh, Activision. <laughs> yeah, he gave him this one here and his friend over here and just, oh, yeah, that's all she wrote, man. He's like, I think he should need, he needs to take, um, Crow Cop's thing and be like, is it right hand <laughs> hospital, left hand cemetery? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. I would rather get in the ring with a prime Mike Tyson rather than that fucker. I w I seen Tyson and and Engano oh. next to each other. The size difference, and I know Tyson can hit hard and he's foot being with him anyway, but 
Imagine that speed, that weight, that power coming at you. Because Ngannou is fast. And he's got long arms as well. Yeah. So that helps for his overall um, power. But then you've got to look at, like, with Ngannou hitting you and Tyson hitting you, Tyson's got the accuracy and he's also got the shorter levers. So there's a lot less distance for them to for it to actually connect. But with Tyson, Ngannou, you can sit there, you can eat your dinner, and by the time he's it connected with you, you've, you finish your dinner. <laughs> but the thing is, though, Tyson hits you out, you're one, you're out, you never eat. You, you, before you're worried about it, you're out, so you, you don't worry about it. Whereas in Ghanu, you see him coming like a fucking animal, like, and you're just thinking, <laughs> You're like a deer in the headlights and you, you, you and, one's going to hit yeah. you. And for us as well, I don't think you'd be out. I think you'd just be dead. I just think <laughs> you'd just be... Yeah. You know? <laughs> That's it. Bodies in the ring it. and your head's in the crowd somewhere. Yeah, just see your shoulders lift up. All that <laughs> shit. But you, you look at these fights here, so bar his um, losses by decision to Mia Chich and Lewis, Mia Chich was off for the belt. Uh, so it was a big step up. And then Lewis was also, we spoke about last week, wasn't the best fight. But you look at, um, who is it now? Uh, Anthony Hamilton uh, beat him in 1 minute 57. Then 1 minute 42. Then 1 minute 42 for Alistair Overeem and Alaski back to back. Or Alaski at Overeem. Then, since he's lost to Lewis, he beat Curtis Blades in 45 seconds. Blades is dangerous. He beat mm. Cain Velasquez in 26 seconds. Velasquez can be dangerous. 1 minute 11 seconds for JDS. And then 20 seconds for Rosenstruck. What the fuck? <laughs> this guy is literally like less than two and a half minutes. He takes out four of the most dangerous heavyweights in, in the division. What's next? It's either DC or the champion of Miocic. It has to be. Hold on. Or Johnny Bones Jones. I don't like that matchup. What the fuck oh, are you what talking about? What? what? But no, no, hold on a second. He, I mean, Jones wrote on Twitter. Uh, it was weird seeing Gareth P fighting at heavy mate, heavyweight. Made it seem so much more real for me, especially knowing he was at 240 pounds. With a little more cardio, he would have been sweet. I was visualizing visualizing myself as him that whole fight. Um, Jones yeah. teases with the heavyweight sort of entry. <laughs> he's got to do it eventually, dude. I think he will. After the, uh, I think he's on top of this one. He tweeted saying, oh, any, any heavy want to do a 220 with me? So he is teasing it, but he's putting a tweet out every event. So he knows Ro he knows Engano will get the money out there and, and, and the, the tongues out and the, and the jaw down thinking, yeah, I want this fight. But I think that's a dangerous fight in the heavyweight when you build up to an Engano because, yeah, you, you, he could probably technically outclass him for three or five rounds, but this guy can take anybody out in the world in Ghana on, on any day. You don't step into that. Maybe he steps in with someone like a Curtis Blades or someone a bit small, an Antina Hamilton, or I would hate to see it and say it because he's past his prime, but Arlovsky, someone a bit small in the heavyweight division that he can probably have a, a good technical battle with. Um, you got to look at the type of athlete Jones is, though. He's a martial artist. He's not there for the win. So for the easy win, he's there to prove a point. Yeah, challenge like, himself. He's going to look at Ngannou and be like, okay, Miocic beat him. DC's beat Miocic. And Jones has beat me, uh, DC twice. Now, in his maths, he beats Ngannou. Yeah, but your, your MMA math never works, ever. I know, but also yeah. as well, on top of all of that, you've got to keep in mind that John Jones has never lost a fight. Any loss on his record is because of that stupid bitch-ass disqualification where he was <laughs> fucking that dude up anyway. You know what I'm saying? The kid's never lost a fight. You don't build that motherfucker up. You don't. No. He's basically right. Anderson Silva. Would you do that with Anderson Silva? Would you fuck? No. You do it straight in. Straight in. Exactly. No, no, straight no, 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 the no, no because so, like, I, think... I think his first... Anderson Silva's first like, heavyweight fight was against James Irving. That's a yeah, good heavyweight point. division. Yeah, good don't throw him in there with the best straight away. He didn't really do that many, but it was James Irving, then it was Forrest Griffin, so he built up towards... Well, that was more of, that was more of favours, though, for the UFC. Go on, yeah. Simon. Sorry, mate. Sorry, I, I, I... Like, you've got to look at Jones as a competitor. Like, I don't think his ego or competitive nature is going to allow him to take an easy fight. Like, like, like Tim said, he's not lost a fight. He's, he's won every fight decisively and he's the kind of guy and he's, he's got the ego to want to go to a division and take the head off straight away like it won't surprise me if he tries to get a Mirchich fight 
I think someone like Miacic is someone that would cause probably Jones the most problems because of the size, the power, the boxing speed. Only be I'm only saying that because I don't see anyone else in the heavyweight division really causing problems. But I think a Miacic could. I disagree. I think Ngani would probably uh, pose more of a risk to Jones than anybody else just because of the power. But outside of that, and no one going to fuck with that kid. No one. No. I guess only time will tell because there's always if, buts, and maybes in like Ferguson, Khabib, Gaethje, Khabib, stuff like that. But only, only time will tell. You'll you never really know because this time last week we were talking that Alt Ferguson was going to beat Gaethje and no one was really giving him a chance, even though he had a puncher's chance. Yeah. But we'll talk about that in a, in a second. We're on the co-main event mm -hmm. now. Um, so, Henry Cejudo, Dominic Cruz. Um, Super disappointed at that. At the fight or the, or the finish? Um, the finish. I'm uh, The only reason I was gutted about the finish is because I wanted five rounds of this. But um, on when I was watching it live, I was like, oh, maybe an early stoppage. Watched it back. I agreed with the stoppage. He, he, Cejudo would have kept on, kept on punching him. Um, it was the end of the round. There was literally two seconds left. The clock doesn't matter. No matter what people say, the clock does not matter. Yeah, but but like, he was got, getting up though. Yeah, there's too many inconsistencies with the, with the refereeing. Like if you look at the Smith fight from um, Wednesday. Oh, without a doubt, completely. How, like yeah. how can you justify the cruise stoppage when that happens? One hundred percent. Because it, it, you don't even need to go to the um, the Smith fight. You can go to the Tony Ferguson fight straight after. I, I, how long that was like, I completely yeah. agree it's it's a weird thing because I think Tony could have been stopped a bit earlier I think Smith could have been stopped a bit earlier I could agree if the fight would have kept on with Cejudo Cruz but I have no problem with the stoppage I just have a problem with the other fights being too late that's that's yeah you can't say that that and that it's just th this fight was probably right because if you look at him he was it, Cejudo could have walked away off that just that kick and the referee probably would have stepped in but it's the fact that sometimes you, you wake up and sometimes they say don't you one punch wakes you up one punch puts you back out one punch wakes you up and yes he was getting up but how much he wasn't defending himself he was getting hit in the head you, you've got it's not an easy job to be in there I would hate to be an MMA ref full stop yeah I I, I agree with the stoppage but I do think you should have let the round ride out like I think he should have given him a better chance. Yeah, he should. He should have given him a bit more time to not 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 because of time on the clock, but we've seen much much worse damage being delivered and taken for the fight to continue. Mm -hmm. Like I know there's no sort of border consensus for when to stop a fight and how to go about that, but. Yeah, like I think championship fights should be given, even though it's a bit of a of, of a of a playing a bit of a hypocritical thing here. It's I think championship fights you should be given the benefit of the doubt unless you've seen someone clean out and, and the eyes are rolled up within reason. You should you should give it the benefit of the doubt because he didn't run the referee didn't run in there when he was out on his back and he was seen he looked a bit a bit haywire. He went in when he was on his knees. He looked like he was trying to move, but. It's a difficult one. I don't disagree with it. I think Cejudo still would have won anyway. Uh, yeah. I didn't see Cruz catching up. Um, did we all pick did we all pick Cejudo on that one? I think we did. No, I'm pretty I sure I picked pick Cruz. Cruz. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, so yeah, I'm the only one that picked Cejudo. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, um, still champion, then he retires. Um, a bit says to me, thank fuck, because he's annoying as fuck. Uh, Super annoying. Yeah. Okay, so a, do you know what? Um, Tim Spriggs put a post out recently saying um, Hodger Gracie was the goat of goats for, across all sports because of how much he dominated um, like the grappling scene. And I was like, fair point. But for me, seeing Cejudo get Olympic gold and UFC gold, that yeah. puts him. That's that puts him amongst the discussion of goats of goats, goat of goats, or whatever you want to call mm. it. Um, and be like being a big Hodger Gracie fan, it puts a Cejudo above Gracie. Yeah, I think I would agree with that one. Um, Cejudo is even though it's annoying and cringy and fuck is you can't 
he's a champion through and through. He's got that mentality. And yeah. I think he's, his retirement is probably right because I think he's turned around to himself and gone, I want a family now. I can't commit 100% with getting, being, creating a family and I can't create a family and try that. It doesn't make any sense. Um, if you, there's two questions that I want to put on the back of this. What's next for Cruz and what do you think they should do for the Bantamweight title next? Cruz needs to retire. I don't think so. I don't agree with that. Why, Simon? Like, he's come back from two big, long breaks, almost as if, just sort of like for, almost as if like the sort of novelty fights where he's took a long break, do you know, and been like, do you know what? There's a gap there. I'm going to jump in and take it. And I don't really see him like breaking that top 10 um, gatekeeper role now. Do what I would have and seen. He should focus on being a coach. He's a great coach and he's got a great team that he could be leading. Like before he sort of gets to the point where he's like, you know, takes enough damage or takes enough knockouts where it's going to affect his coaching. Like, let's see how let's see how we can sort of lead the next forefront of fighters. Yeah, what I wouldn't mind seeing. So, my, answering my own questions here for the title would be Marlon Marais and Peter Yan. I think they're the best two banner weights in the world, bar Cejudo. And then because of Cruz, I wouldn't mind seeing Cruz and Aldo because they're both coming off losses. The Aldo wants to make a run at bantamweight. Um, Cruz is coming off a loss, and that could be a main event in, on any card. Cruz and Aldo. I think though with this, the way the rankings are work, work out, it's it's got um, Aldo at three and Marias at two. So Is it? The, the, yeah, the one that I've got up here. I've got the UFC rankings here. I've got Marlon Marais and Peter Yan one and three, and Aldo wow. uh, at number six after behind so who uh, Sterling Sandhagen and Asuj or wow, so Obviously, it's all opinion uh, rankings. Yeah. Uh, Tim, what's your thought on uh, Cruz and, and what's next for the bantamweight division? Um, <clears throat> so from my perspective um, I don't think he needs to retire I think he needs to come back and work his way up a little bit maybe from just above the middle uh, and get a few fights if he chooses to do that um, if he does get injured anymore he should probably end up looking at calling it a day I mean you know from a legacy perspective he doesn't really have that much more to prove he's a badass motherfucker and also as well considering the style of fighting that he does it looks like he dances drum and bass music imagine having like a full-on kind of school of those in the UFC just like you know that becomes a kind of style where it's like you know the crew style that'll be pretty cool to see to see if be, um, there's like you know more than one person who can kind of replicate that um, so yeah probably kind of like you know See how he goes, and then if he doesn't work out, into the coaching hardcore, man. What do you think is next for the Bantamweight title? Then? Who would you, who, what are the two people you'd put in both years? I'd give zero fucks. The Bantamweights don't really... Uh, minus Dominic Cruz and stuff. Are, are, really. are they like white belts to you, Tim? They don't exist. No, it's not... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <They're> gonna, <laughs> what's your name again? Gonna, <laughs> don't tell me. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Sai, who would you put in? I'd have to agree with you, to be fair, Marias and uh, Peter Yan. But, like, if I'm brutally honest, like, I'm, same, I'm similar with Tim, where that division's not really on my radar. Like, mm. I, I tend to watch a lot of the fights and stuff now to try and take some sort of lesson away from them. And way too small for me to try and really, like, yeah. <laughs> not for me <laughs> let's leave it at that <laughs> so we'll move on to the lightweight division um, Justin Gaethje and Tony Ferguson um, this did not go like I said before what, how most people thought this was a five round drubbing Justin Gaethje proving that he's a badass that he can hang with the best in the world what do you guys think go on Simon completely surprised me this one like Gaethje's right hand and his ability to sustain that amount of power over five rounds and almost like the knockout was almost as if he'd hit Ferguson's reset button and he was like, what's going on? Dude, he was trying to shake that off. I don't know what was, I'd really love to know what he was going through at that specific moment. So, 
what do you think was missing with Tony? Obviously, people put it down to him making 155 two weeks before, which... No, no, no. Um, Gage is just better. Yeah. Gage is just better. Fair enough. Mm. I would, I would probably agree with that. I would, at some point down the line, I'm not saying in a immediate rematch. I think maybe in a couple of years' time, because both probably be up the top of the division again at some point. Maybe seeing a rematch of that, see, see if anything different. Because obviously, right now times are very different. Training, weight cuts, everything sort of skew with. So it'd be nice to see in a couple of years when everything's back to normal or whatever normal is then that people will go right. You know this fight's happening. It happens. Nothing ever changes. It's just that fight, six, eight, twelve week training camp, and see what happens then. But I agree, Gaethje probably comes out the winner. And I never thought I would say that. I, get, I thought Tony Ferguson beats everyone, but Khabib. Even though I thought Tony is Khabib's biggest threat, and maybe like, a... maybe if math doesn't work, so maybe that's still the case. No, possibly. I think possibly. I mean, keep in mind as well, the geezer has been training for fucking years for Khabib. Literally. I mean, what was this? Like the fifth time the fight had been set up? Yeah. He's had a lot of training camps. Khabib's like the number one undefeated. So you're going to have a lot of people, not just Tony, who even in like, you know, beyond the idea of, oh, I've got to fight this guy and I've got it all set up. You're going to be thinking about things and training different things just in case that, you know, you do get that call. Um, so he just wasn't ready. For, I mean, even though his stand up, I, I think that as well. But I don't. I think even if he was ready, even if he had trained the stand up loads, I still think he would have been a fucking shit show. I think he still would have got fucked up. Gaethje was just great that night. He was yeah. awesome on point, moving out, slipping and hitting. Um, he was just doing really, really nicely. Uh, the whole thing was just excellent to see. He was great. There was no way Teddy could take him down either. One thing you got to look at as well is. Like, you mentioned that Ferguson had so many ups and downs preparing for Khabib, this, that, and the other. Gaethje took the fight on short notice. He... Short-ish. Short-ish short -ish notice. It was short yeah. notice. Then it got it extended. It was a full <laughs> training camp. So, they both had a similar amount of time to game plan for each other. Yeah. Mm. So for me, that that's that a very good point. Yeah, because actually, that's never. yeah, because every whenever someone comes in, everyone's like, oh well, the guy had a change of opponent. Well, they both had the same. Yeah, it's that's the point. They had yeah. the same amount of time to game plan for each other. That like, and if anything, Ferguson should have, should have been more prepared because he, his were saying game plan against Khabib would have been to keep it standing and to beat him up. I think apparently that's not the case. Sorry, just based on some uh, stuff that I've heard of the Bravo saying, they were going to try, they're going to stand up with him. If it goes down, they weren't going to fight the takedown. And then they had a bunch of shit waiting for him the moment he gets down, uh, which is one of the reasons I was really looking forward to watching the fight. Um, and I, I got to say, I'm gutted for Tony to a degree. I'm gutted for myself as a fan because we're never going to see that fight now. It's going to be the fight that it's never, never was. You know what I mean? But it's never going to happen. At the same time, I think Gaethje and Khabib now, after seeing that performance, puts out a bit more of an exciting prospect. Like, Gaethje's defensive wrestling, like, he's not, he's been taken down, what, twice in his career? He's elite to... Twice too much. Twice, twice too, too much. much. Trust me, Khabib's going to get him. Oh, Khabib yeah, I'm not saying gonna... Khabib won't take him down. Mm. I'm, I'm just being like, I think it's not going to be as easy as people are sort of expecting. Like, I think, again, Gates is going to come into this, into this fight, the underdog, and almost overlooked by a lot of the fans. Yeah. I think I say Khabib smokes him, absolutely marks him. Uh, I, I, think think he he even get, I don't even think he gets to the fifth round. I think could be by decision. Um, I think Gates has got the durability to to sort of hang in there, no matter where it's at, even if he's getting beat up. Um, but like what Sam said before about the reset button, maybe every time Gates be hit Ferguson and it stunned him, and he sort of came back too. He was like, "Shit, you're not could be bang. Shit, you're not could be bang." He just kept on hitting him. <laughs> well, that he was, was getting one he was impressive quite performance. Him. It was an extremely um, impressive performance. It was getting uncomfortable to watch at some, some points, though. I mean, at what point do you throw in the fucking towel? He wasn't going to win. After him. Yeah. I mean, at one point, I mean, like, I think it was like third round. Was it like end of the third? when he walks back to his corner. And Eddie Bravo says to him, like, you know, okay, what do you think? Kind of Hail Mary sort of Imanari role. 
The moment that shit didn't work, Tao should have been thrown in. Mm. Yeah. Because if you're talking about how Mary is, fucking mate, you, you forget about it. It's lost then, you know what I mean? If it's just a few adjustments, that's something. If it's Hail Mary's, fucking you've lost. I think you can blame, you can almost blame Eddie Bravo for that mindset. Like that, that word should never have been brought into it anyway. As a corner, you're supposed to G up your, your, your court, your man. You're supposed mm. to strategize and you're supposed to keep them on a level, like level headed to think that either you're down, let's win this round. Right, you've, you're two rounds down. We need to finish him. Not a, Right, do you know what? Nothing's working. Let's go for a Hail Mary. It's yeah. like, no, yeah. we need to change the language there. And mm, that's not Eddie messaging Bravo you want to be putting in. Overstepped his mark with that, with that comment. Yeah. I Especially for someone who's never been in a cage. I'd, I'd agree with Eddie that. Bravo's overstepped his mark with that. Mm. Although what I will say is, in, in defence of Eddie Bravo, I can't believe I'm going to say that. In defence of Eddie Bravo, I think it may be, it could possibly be a case of, you're there with your fighter, you want him to do well. So, you know, you get in there, there's got to be a kind of level of nervousness. I mean, I've been there when friends fight and like your heart's going like a lab rat because you want to, you know, it's almost like you're in there with them to a degree, you know what I mean? Your mm. adrenaline's going as much as theirs. So that, you know, being in that kind of adrenal life state, maybe is a case of like, you know, it's just, he, he wasn't always constantly thinking about, like, you know, the ramifications or, you know, the kind of soundbite of what he said. It was much more a case of, okay, well, maybe we try this. Um, it wasn't the greatest way he put it, but he just, yeah, I don't think he was kind of looking at the psychology of what he said, possibly. I think as, as, a, as a corner man, though, that's your job and that's True. your role. Like, Do your fucking job. <laughs> yeah, there's no excuse for that kind of language, especially when you've got somebody who's taking that much damage. Like... It's 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 NLP one oh one, like you 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 change your language to to positive. Mm. Like if you say right, we're a hell we're in a Hail Mary, it's sort of like we're probably gonna lose this fight, but <laughs> we've got a small percentage of winning it. It's like, no, that's that like no nah, Eddie Bravo needs to have a word of himself after that comment, if I'm honest with you. Mm. The Well, not just about that, motherfucker thinks the earth is flat. Carry on. <laughs> that's a whole new subject. <laughs> that's another podcast. Um, so uh, that brings us to the end of 249. That, that was a great event and um, I enjoyed it being back. And just to rub it in your guys' faces, uh, predictions I win seven to six to five. L- <laughs> Lois was Tim. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking ridiculous. Um, but we won't touch on the, the Wednesday cards. I think it'll take us too long, but we'll touch on the, on the top two. Um, Co main event, Rothwell and Ovin St. Pru. Um, OSP didn't look like he even wanted to be in there. That's how I felt. I he felt did like look he... a bit kind of uh, tentative. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like it, I was shocked that it was split decision. I did. Like, OSP just spent the whole time running and Ben Rothwell spent the whole time leaning. Yeah, I agree. 30 27 to Rothwell for me, unanimous. If there was yeah. probably more than me, I've, oh, I don't think I was split against yourself, you can't. Um, <laughs> The amount of- <laughs> I give that a split decision. Yeah, if you see the amount of people do that saying unanimous decision, I would give it a split. What against yourself? Are you <laughs> who are you splitting between? Yeah, are you what's that thing? Glass or whatever it's called. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Just like fuck me. Uh... It's like you, you, you and Patricia. Yeah. Um... But yeah, I think OSP looked very out of place. Like he look, I think heavyweight division will be good for him. I just think he needs to feel stronger. If you think, mate, I don't know what it is. Maybe he didn't really think it through. He can't. He normally weighs in at two hundred five. He weighed in at two forty point five, whatever it was. And then you get Ben Rothwell looking over at you at cage, who's he's fucking huge, and you'll think I'm the biggest I've ever been in this cage, and this cunt. If fucking massive, what am I going to do? Maybe that went through his head. Maybe he just didn't think it through properly. Moving to heavyweight, obviously, it wasn't a permanent move. It was a, a, a conditional move because of everything that's going on. He wanted to fight. This is the only fight he could get. Um, he's a good fighter, OSP, and I've watched him since Strike Force. I just felt like he really, really disappointed himself, and not, not just fans. Just He could have done better. He could have thrown, even if he thrown Hail Marys and Haymakers, he could have maybe caught Rothwell uh, and done some damage, but he didn't like he wanted to be in there. 
No, his it's kicking good. game never got off. Like, if he would have been attacking the legs, attacking the body, I think he would have come out on top with this fight if he would have just got his leg kicks and his body kicks going. Yeah. Um, keeping Like, he did a good job keeping the distance, but it was too much of a running away rather than measuring, striking, measuring, striking, and sort of a bit more of a calculated approach. Yes, I agree but, with that. Um, so, main event, um, a, a bit like the Gaethje Ferguson fight, went completely against what I was thinking. Do you know uh, what, though? That first round, I was like, Smith's going to take this. And then all of a sudden, Tashira just took control. He, like, it was around, was it second or third round? Second or third round, it started to pick up the pace, Tashira. Um, so, with Glover, and obviously, looking back at the fights, Smith has just come off last year submitting Gustafsson, who's probably one of the best fighters we've ever seen in there, and just just finished him. And you're thinking, Tashira's getting on, Smith's hungry, he's, he's still a lion, he'll still take him out, he'll probably finish him. Obviously, looking back at now, Smith had a broken orbital, broken nose. He, he lost two teeth in that fight. That's how much damage Tashira put on him. It was definitely a late stoppage. It should have been stopped sooner, if not the, his own corner thrown in the towel. That's what's been discussed. But, but Tim, what did you think about this main event? Uh, I didn't watch it. Fair play. <laughs> great, Tim. It's, it's one worth watching. Do you know what? <laughs> Just before we progress on to this fight, if you're going to watch any of these, any of these fights, uh, mm. Ricky Simon, Ray, Ray Borg, and Alex Hernandez and Drew Dober. Boom. Fights to watch. Okay. Oh, okay. Really, really, really so, great performances. I agree. When I was doing my predictions for the night, I picked these two to be the fight of the nights. Um, and I picked, I picked Simone and I picked Henderson to win them. So I got one out, one right, one wrong. But Hernandez was winning the first round. It was very back and forth. But Dober seemed to stick into another gear in the second round. Um, Those two were very, very impressive. Um, like, do you know, I'd like to see them meet again in like a year or two. These are two, two tough and future prospects. I agree with that. One thing I don't, obviously, because if Tim's not seen this, I need to show this. Simon... Uh, when you uh... Tim have you seen that what the fuck happened is that his shin that's his shin from checking kicks fucking hell dude so that's um, Gabriel Benitez he got he got defeated by da, 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 get it back up sorry um, is it Oren, Omar Morales uh, if that's how you pronounce his name um yeah, he was checking so many kicks and the blood was going down. Then the end of the fight, you can't see this because this isn't a video, but he's swabbing it, uh, the cut man, and you can see the muscle flexing. Oh, dude. It is messed up. Ooh. Fucking hell, man. Yeah, Omar Morales. I picked Omar in this fight. Um, <sighs> what? This was a great fight as well. I would definitely recommend this one. This, Ricky Simone, Drew Dober, uh, a great fight. Uh, and the only thing I w maybe wanted to touch on was the Michael Johnson Thiago Moises fight. Uh, Michael Johnson looked great in the first round, definitely won it. And a bit like what Eddie Bravo said, uh, Eddie Bravo was in Moises' corner. Was that right? I'm not sure. I'm not sure he's in the corner, but I do know he that he did the he definitely uh, Paul Harris one. trick of keeping. I'm on sure the it was this one. In between the rounds, he just said go for the leg, and he literally died for the takedown, got the leg, and tapped Johnson in the second round in 25 seconds by leg lock. After beautiful entry, Johnson beautiful set up. doing great. Um, so it just shows if he would have said maybe said that to Ferguson earlier, if I got if I've got this right in in, in the right yeah. fight, maybe that would have been a thing. But you never know. Anywho, I can't see I can't see Ferguson landing that on Gaethje, but like what it almost kind of showed that Johnson's possibly not come against a leg locker or trained with leg lockers. His defence and the way that he sort of addressed it was almost like, I'm going to try and hit you rather than I'm going to get my leg free, drop the, get below the knee line and get out of there. It was like, oh, shit, what am I doing? That, that, that's sort of how it looked, it looked to me. True. The, um, it wasn't a bad card. It wasn't as good as Saturday. Um, a lot of performances which I weren't really impressed with, like Philippe Lean. Alofsky. Alofsky. Because um, Leans is a PFL heavyweight champion, he should have done more. 
but there was just a few fights in there like Morris and Eubanks. Um, there was wasn't that much in there that I was impressed with. Um, I just feel like they were going through the motions in them fights. But obviously, you've got to be in there to uh, to do the business, and uh, we don't do that anymore. Um, but we'll move on to this weekend's card. We'll we'll just touch on the main card for predictions. Um, yeah. It's a good prelims. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, Matt Brown back. I'm looking forward to seeing Darren Elkins back against late uh, Nate Land Landwer. I think if you're out of the prelims, for people that are watching it, I think uh, Nate's one to watch. Um, he's fr he fought an M1 Global. I think he was a featherweight champion at some point. He lost his debut, but I still think he's one to watch. Uh, and obviously, Matt Brown's always entertaining. So... Let's touch on what we said before the podcast. So you was wondering why Uriah Faber was crashing the weigh-ins. So he yeah. did. He did. He did weigh in tonight for for Tomorrow Night's right, card. He weighed in at 153 and a half pounds. The reason was was because Song Yudong, who's he's part of Team Alpha Male, he's he's there. He was weighing in. He, he could, it, there was rumours that his uh, visa was going to get pulled for some reason. They didn't go into detail. So he turned around to Marlon Vera and, and the UFC and was like, I'll step in. I'm not going to make 145 because it's same day. I'm not going to cut for this. But I'll weigh in at 153. Song Yudong will weigh in at 145. If Song gets pulled out, I'll step in. It'll be a catch weight. That's literally what he was going to do. Fair play. Fair Which play. technically could still happen, but... Fuck <laughs> the guy is just he, he's uh, he's an OG in a Uriah Faber. Yeah, be interesting to sort of to see him back in there, but I don't know. It's a bit of a risky one. I think it's Marlon Vera as well. What do you think yeah. about Tim him stepping in last minute if he if he does? What? <laughs> Sorry, uh, against who? Who? What? Who are against... with us, Tim? <laughs> yeah, I'm here. Who against who? Marlon Vera versus Uriah Faber. Yeah. Uriah Faber could happen tomorrow. Hold on. If people are listening to this, Tim is literally looking at his many screens in his office. I know what he's <laughs> like. He's trying to take data in, and he can't multitask. That <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Overload, overload. Um, yeah, I think Faber needs to kind of retire and shit. Um, I mean, you know, it's just his last. It was last fight was the comeback fight, wasn't it? Yes, yes. And he won that, right? Yes, yeah. Still thinking he's retired though. I know it's weird, right? <laughs> Again. Uh, <coughs> so if the fight does go ahead between Song Yudong and Marlon Vera, um, I would uh, pick uh, Yudong. What are you two going with? I'm going same Yudong. Tim. Yudong, why not? <laughs> So, um, if you do, you got a dong, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> the next fight I'm interested in because <laughs> these two are hard hitting and gritty middleweights in Eric Anders and uh, Christoph Jotko. Um, I think I would maybe lean towards Jotko. Uh, what are you two saying? I'm not sure. Uh, I think, do you know what? I'm probably going to go with. I'm going to go with Anders. Just I'm going to go with Anders as well. Based on zero information whatsoever, I, don't, I haven't heard of either of these fools, but Eric Anders is a name I think I've heard on the periphery. So, yep, he'll win. <laughs> so, now we're... <laughs> this is how I do most of these, by the way. That does not yeah. <laughs> You are probably uh, under a bit of influence as well, knowing you on a Friday. Yeah. <laughs> So the moment it hit five, I was this, this is a very interesting one. Um Dan Age, which he's the number 15th ranked featherweight, if I've got that right. Let me get that up quickly. Uh yeah, number 15th uh, ranked featherweight is going against um Edson Barboza at featherweight. So this is his debut at featherweight, and he's ranked number eleven at lightweight. Um Wow, I never thought that kid would make featherweight. He's he's he's, he's ripped at lightweight. That's the thing, is yeah. But um, apparently, it's easier to cut water with muscle than it is any other way. If you've got like a decent kind of uh, muscle mass, apparently cutting weight does become easier. Apparently, yeah. So I've heard. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know from any sort of personal experience, but yeah. I'm going to I've say the great boy. if it can make the weight kind of water. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Tim, Simon, what do you say? So I'm just saying fat tends to carry more water. So I thought muscle carried more water. 
carries more like sugar and glycogen. Um, okay. Which may carry more more water as a, like if it's fully loaded up, but uh, fat's a bit more a bit has a bit more water in it uh, content. Okay, but uh, maybe it's a case of in terms of the removal of the water content is easier mm. from a muscle than it is from fat. Um, yeah. yeah, it was Max Holloway. That was it. I saw him talking about something. Um, I think he was talking about somebody's weight cut and he saw the dude was like proper muscly. He was just like, oh, he'll be perfectly fine. Um, yeah, he mentioned something about that. Anyways. If you were to pick a winner then in this, would you still stick with Barbodes because we're not what we know in the, in the lightweight division or do you feel like this sort of cut to um, featherweight against a top rank, ranked featherweight who's used to this? Do you think you still go towards Barbodes or do you go with towards Dan Ike? What do you think? I'm going with Ig. Let's say, Sam, sorry? I'm going to go with Ig on Aig. this one. I think Barboza. Um, Me too. I think I'm more Barboza confident. Record, it's very telling. And then the extra strain from the cut and everything else around the whole situation of the event, I think it's going to play a bigger fact, bigger role in it than... Uh, than if it was just a general um, the more main event. Yeah, I think with Barboza, when um, Aldo cut to bantamweight and the scene is weighing against Marlon Moraes, and even though he lost it anyway, and I looked at the fight as he won it by decision, that's my judge's decision if I was judging it. Um, I was less confident about Aldo making bantamweight than I am about Barboza into featherweight. Um, but I feel like Barboza will probably pick Dan apart. Um, I think it's a great, great fight, especially for Dan, who's proven himself has got has got nothing to really lose and gain in this way. He, he, he's got more to gain against maybe an, someone in his own division because of who Barboza is and stepping down and could probably beat someone bigger than him, could probably uh, rise his stock a little bit because Barboza is a name. He's been around a long time. Dan's still making his name. But um, I think Barboza, probably by second round stoppage, um, but I think Barboza anyway. Um, yeah. Coleman is a strange one. Um, Claudio Gedalia against Angela Hill. I don't think Hill's got a chance. I think Gedalia is top, 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 top of the division. Like, by far. Um, I just don't see him having a chance. I wholeheartedly disagree. I think Angie Hill, if it stays standing, has an excellent chance. Um, I think if it hits the ground, she, she's, she's going to sink real quick. Uh, but yeah, I think if it stays standing, my money's on Angie Hill all day. So who, if you, Tim, if you had to pick a winner, what would you pick? Uh, Overkill Hill. Simon? Uh, do you know what? I'm genuinely torn on this one. Uh, they both... Can I just say something, though? Cla Claudia Gedalia is way fitter, though. <laughs> 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 she is a good-looking woman, I give you that. <laughs> so... So, yeah, Sam, you, you split, but who, if you had to lean, where are you going? You know what? I'm going to go with Gedalia. Um, purely on, she's ranked higher, and she's probably making a bit more of a title chase. Yeah. I I do like watching Angela. I think she's great. I think that since we've really seen her since she first started because of the tough season, uh, because when she first sort of stepped in, she was only 1-0. and So she's really grown the sport. And considering now, her record doesn't really do her justice uh, because she has fight tough, tough ladies. Uh, she was the Invicta champion before she came back to the UFC. So she's probably the future. I just think Gedalia finishes. Uh, sorry, I, I'm sorry, apologies. I think Gedalia wins it by decision, but comfortably. Um, maybe, maybe finishes Hill. I just don't think Hill's got it right now. Um, but... Tomorrow night, we'll see. I guess this is why we love the sport so much. It's unpredictable. Um, mm. The next one is, on paper, one of the best heavyweight fights we've come across, even though we've been spoilt recently. Um, but like we touched on last week, it's a bit of a, a sour note that Harris is stepping in since the first time his stepdaughter was um, kidnapped and murdered. Um, it leaves you with a soft spot for him and how he probably is doing mental mentally. And considering over him, he's one of my favourite fighters of all time. Um, it's a tough one. What do you think, Tim? I think over... Mm, yeah, I think over him. Um, more so because I don't know too much about Walt Harris. So, yeah, over him. Um, considering the amount of times the geese has been knocked out, he's still doing pretty well. 
Uh, it doesn't seem to be kind of, I mean, there are fighters out there where you, you see them speak now in interviews um, and how they sound now in comparison to how they used to sound a bunch of years ago is markedly different. Whereas with him, he's been sparked a bunch of times, but he seems fine. So yeah, over him for me. Simon? I'm going to go with uh, Walt on this one. I think just off like age difference there is like he's it's not the greatest deal is it try to check their ages now um so Overeem's the more seasoned vet here but I am liking oh there's not even that much of a difference between them I am liking Walt Harris um I think emotionally he's got more to prove and I think that's going to show in the fight yeah I'm very very torn with this one um I feel like so see you've gone over him, Tim, Simon's gone Harris. I always want to lean. The geezer trains with Wim Hof for crying out loud. You can't not. You know what I mean? Come on. Yeah, I feel like I feel a bit like was gonna save him from Walt's right arm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, <sighs> it's I'm really torn with this one. I really am. I think right now I'm going to say Harris, but obviously it's for what we're going against each other. But obviously I'm going to study all this tomorrow before we put any sort of bets on and my topology predictions. Um, and I might change my mind. But yeah, I think I'll go with Harris. Um, but I am very, very torn in this fight. It's a great, great main event. Uh, something you can probably lick your lips at and, and then sit back and enjoy it. Just don't blink, just in case. Yeah. Um, but it's a great, obviously, three fights in seven days have been spoiled. Um, I'll have a, oh, you questioned before, Sam. Oh, no, it's, it's the 30th. It's uh, the 30th. I don't know where I had next weekend in my head. So that's obviously, we'll, we'll, we'll cover that in a couple of weeks. That That's to the 30th. It's still, nothing's really concrete. It doesn't say, it looks like... Also, again, what's the 30th? The Tyron uh, Woodley versus Gilbert Burns. Ah, is that UFC 250? No, no that's 176. That's... 250 is uh, for the women's featherweight title. Nunez and Spencer. Yeah, that's it. Felicia Spencer and Nunez. That's not confirmed anything, though. June 6th, but not where and how or whatever. Mm. It'll be on Dana White's Secret Fight Island. <laughs> oh, man. So, we've covered the UFCs. I've enjoyed that. Um, like I say, we've been spoiled. Um, highlight of the week, Simon, fight-wise? Do you know what? This is purely because I'm a grappling fan and... Uh, I'm going to go with Bryce Tim what about you um, Tony getting sparkoed because um, as much as I am a fan of his fighting his winning and wanting to see the whole Khabib thing I think he's a complete fucking douchebag so yeah I was quite happy when he got sparked <laughs> <laughs> um, I would probably say um, I agree with Simon in, in Bryce um, even though Gaethje was shocking and I loved it and I loved watching Justin Gaethje I followed him for, for many years um, I enjoyed watching that fight that, that was so entertaining um, how you can dominate someone and not cause any damage and I think it's the reason why all of us fell in love with Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is because um, you, what you can do with your body against another human being and not have to throw a strike and I think that was beautiful mm. Um, I mean, he was taking him down into kind of like twisted position. It was beautiful, those takedowns. And he did it multiple times. It wasn't like he did it. He yeah. was just like, he saw it maybe in situ where it was an accident. He was just like, oh, this is stuff he's obviously trained. It was really, really good. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, I've got to give it to Rosa as well. Like, he didn't give up. Oh, without a doubt. Like, he had head and arm chokes that were probably lesser men would have tapped to. Absolutely. Lister was absolutely horrendous. You see the first head and arm triangle. He, he hovered. Yeah, he went DEFCON 4 on it. Yeah, yeah. He went to the mm, fucking mm. dude and he still and, wouldn't. And every time he put him in an arm triangle, it looked tighter. And I was like, don't you look at the, the finger? It's over. Yeah, it's, it's over. He's done. He's not getting out of that. Uh, and he gets that is it, hard it, 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 He's out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, some of the stuff he's going to have, I'll just like his submission defense is really, really, really good. While he might not have been able to amount a lot of offense, his jits was obviously good enough to be able to kind of keep himself defended in those positions uh, and to get out of the ones that he got caught in as well. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, he, he, he hats off to the geezer for that. Yeah, absolutely. 
Definitely. So, boys, it's been a pleasure. Uh, Absolutely. Quick and easy one tonight. It's Friday evening. We can tell we're all tired. It's been a long week in London. Thank you, in there. <laughs> <laughs> um, we seem to be in a step closer, a bit more normality. The German Bundesliga is coming back tomorrow, which I'm a football fan, so I'm buzzing about that. We get a UFC. Um, but, yeah, it's been sweet. Enjoy the rest of the weekend, boys. Um, we'll have this out tomorrow. But, yeah, stay safe. Enjoy. Yeah, you too, guys. Peace, Peace out.